Oh, hi there, beautiful people. My name is Justin Taylor. You're here at Firestorm Freerunning, and today we're learning the cast back. A really cool thing about our cast back is that it's a very versatile trick. It can be done on the edge of a wall, it can be done hanging or from a front support on a bar, it can even be done on a cat bar on a wall like this bar right here. Now when you do these ones, this is another variation I'm just going to show you guys real quick. It's not the main one we're going to get in today, but it's 90% the same as the cast back and that is called a pop cast. The only difference is instead of starting in our front support if you're on a bar or our half cat if you're on a wall, this one is starting in our cat position and we pop ourselves up too close to a front support and then do our cast back. This version looks a little different. It looks just like this. I come in, I come up to my cat position right here. I'm going to pop up and cast back just like that. Now we're going to get into our 60 second breakdown. I'm going to explain what we're doing using the wall right here and a nice little block. Obviously, I can't do this one in super slow motion because it is a very snappy, powerful trick. We're gonna break down each part of it and then I'm gonna take you guys to the foam pit where we have safety mats so we can break it down in a safe manner. Catch my breath. You guys ready? You wanna do that magic thing that you do? Wait, wait, I know how to, wait, 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 wait hold on, ready? Right. Did, did my hair make the magic start? Nice, 60 second breakdown. All right, our cast back. Most important thing, you gotta have a cast. If you don't have a cast, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna use this bar, or this bar. We're gonna use this right here. First thing I do, hands shoulder width apart in my front support position. I get my half cat. It is easier to lean forward and place your hips on the edge of our vault box here. I'm gonna pop into a cast. Unlike a normal cast, I'm gonna arch. I want a small but archy cast. I go here, pop. Notice I'm leaning forward. From here, I am going to push. I'm doing this not with my arms, but a shoulder block. As I go for my arch, I shoulder block, and I'm pulling my knees up. It is important you do not push away and then try to tuck. I'm gonna pop my butt up at the end of my cast as I block. I go here. You can see how my knee is driving up. I should be uncomfortably close to the wall. You need to already have your back flip to do this skill. As I push through here, I'm just going into my normal back flip, coming around, spotting the ground, opening up, extending towards the ground, absorbing, trying to keep and rolling my chest and my head up. Most important thing, arch, push and tuck, same time. Do not push and then tuck. You will not have enough momentum. You will splat yourself and I will giggle at you. Let's head on over to the foam pit where we can break this down in a little bit more detail and how you can practice this without murderizing yourself. Hey, all right, we're gonna start breaking down the skills that you are going to need in order to be able to do your cast back. So one of the most important ones is your shoulder block. Without a shoulder block, this thing is not going to work. This, when you push away for your cast back, it is not done so much with your arms as it is done with this shoulder extension. You can do it with your arms, but as I was training a friend of mine who's a very, very good tumbler. I mean, this guy is 6'2 and does lay dub fulls. Beautiful. Never done a cast back as he's a tumbler, not a free runner. When he was doing this, even though he's big and strong and he knows how to flip, he was trying to do it all with the triceps right here, like a push up and pushing thing was not working. Once he uh, changed over to the blocking technique, suddenly he started landing these no problem. So it doesn't matter how skilled you are, if you treat it like a push up, you will have a hard time. The way to start practicing your blocking technique is find yourself, you can use a table, you can use just about anything as long as it's solid. And what I'm gonna practice doing is taking a little step. I'm gonna kick my leg behind me, almost like I'm casting, and I'm gonna come here, place my hands, and as I push that foot, I'm going to push my shoulder blades down, trying to pop myself up and off of this object. Hopefully, I won't fall the six feet over here to my death. Ha ha! I'm gonna come in and lock. You'll notice I'm popping myself off my hands, but I'm not. See how much slower that is? Look how explosive this is. That's done all with the shoulders. Real quick side note, this is a weird thing that most people don't do. If you don't do a lot of free running or parkour, if you don't do a lot of tumbling, you may not necessarily have the shoulder flexibility as well as the shoulder strength to do a good block. It does not mean you can do a cast back, it just means it's gonna be a lot harder. There are three little exercises you can do to build up to getting a stronger block. Uh, 
We'll say four because this one you can do as well, but this one is more technique and timing driven. The ones that are gonna build you the strength are these three quick exercises. Number one, shoulder blocking push-ups. I pull my shoulder blades together, I'm sinking down, and now I'm pushing up. You'll notice how much I'm extending here, almost as much as like a real push-up. Most people do a push-up here, here, shoulder extension. Just doing shoulder extensions will make a huge difference. Number two, I'm gonna come on over with you guys. Hi there, how you doing? Hey friends, is hanging from a bar. Just like we did the push-ups with our shoulders, we're gonna do pull-ups with our shoulders. I sag down so my shoulders are touching my ears, and I pull up until my shoulders are as low as I can go. Back down again, up, down, up. Don't drop yourself down, your spine won't like it. Go down slow, squeeze, go up, squeeze. Shoulder blocking push-ups. The last one, or sorry, shoulder blocking pull-ups. We did the push-ups, we did the pull-ups. The last one that you can do is the same thing as this, but upside down, which means we're doing shoulder blocking handstands. We find ourselves a wall. You can spider walk up with your tummy towards the wall, or you can kick up so the back of your heels are against the wall and your back's to the wall. I'm gonna do this one because it's a little more advanced and I like it a little better. I kick up. From here, all I'm gonna do, push up until my shoulder blades touch my ears, sag down until they're as low as they can go. Up, down, up, squeeze, down, squeeze, up, squeeze, down, squeeze, all around town, squeeze. Hey. All right, those are our three primary exercises to build those blocking muscles. All right, make sure you do those as well as your timing and coordination practice here. From there, as my shoulders feel good, remember we're coming in and we are blocking. What we're gonna work on next is the actual entry into the flip. Now, like we talked about before, you have to have a good cast. I'm gonna have you guys come right over here and hang out with me. If you can make it over the precipice of doom. Dun, dun, dun! Oh, hey. You survived longer than... Spoilers, and your own fault for not reading the comics. Okay, moving right along. We're gonna come up here and get in our half cat position. Yeah! We do the thing we're always not supposed to do. We're gonna drop our hips and let our hips sit on the wall. You also notice my shoulders are really high. I'm not trying to look like nice, you know, up here. I am sagging down, so that way the center of my body right here where I hinge, the center of my hips is actually resting on this edge. If my shoulders are pushed down and I'm trying to stand nice and tall where I normally would, now this edge is on my thighs. I can't cast as well off my thighs as I can off this hinge where I can, you can see I can roll myself up. So we need to have a good cast. Normally, I try to get people to work towards a gymnastics cast where you cast up and your body is nice and flat. You will not build as much power. In fact, a larger and more powerful gymnastics cast will actually work against you in a cast back. We're gonna do what in gymnastics terms is considered really bad form, but for free running and for this particular move is gonna make your life a lot easier. And that is you're gonna cast into an arch position. As I do that, you'll notice to keep myself from floating away, fading away, Mr. Stark. Uh, in order to keep myself from floating back and away and disintegrating, I'm gonna lean forward my shoulders over my hands and over this edge just a little bit. So I'm here, I'm sagging down, my hips are right here on the edge, I'm gonna lean forward, I'm gonna arch to my cast, up like that. Nice and easy. You'll notice I'm not even casting that high, right? The idea is to get the heels driving up behind me, not to get my hips super far away from the wall. Now from that, how do we turn that weird thing in this archy shape into a backflip? Technically, a backflip and a quarter, because you're already here, you're no longer vertical, so you're doing one and a quarter flips. How are we gonna pull it off? Well, here's the first drill we're gonna do. As soon as your legs snap up into the arch, all right, as you're in that high floaty, that like floaty position like the back or the front of a swing, what I'm gonna do is from here, I'm going to do three things simultaneously. Number one, I'm going to shoulder block. When I'm blocking, I'm trying to block at a 45 degree angle. I'm not blocking myself up because then when my legs come in, I'm gonna slam them into the wall. No fun. I don't wanna block back because the further I shoot backwards, although it makes me feel more comfortable and safe here in my brain, I go, this wall is scary, I don't want to kick it. The further I go back, the slower I'm gonna rotate. You ever seen somebody jump up into a backflip and then land versus jump way back into a backflip? The one that jumps further back rotates slower. 
This trick is a very fast, snappy trick. You can't afford to have a slow rotation. You've got to stay a little closer to the wall. So we're going to be doing that block. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to snap and tuck the legs in. But as I do that, just like our front flips that we've practiced where we pop our butt up in the air, I'm going to be simultaneously pretending I'm getting wedgied while I'm breaking it down on the dance floor. I'm going to block. I'm going to pop my butt up. And as my butt pops up, I'm going to take those legs from the arch, my knees are going to come forward, and I'm going to be trying to pop my booty up. It sounds a little weird, and it is. It's a little complicated to get the right timing in the beginning, so I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. And what we're going to use is we're using a nice, kind of like four foot high wall right here with a mat, so I can practice doing this and landing on my back, which will get me halfway through my flip. So we're going to look a little like this. I'm going to come in, I'm going to do my cast, arch. And I'm falling straight down. Notice how close my feet were to that wall. Look at this. I'm really close. Most people don't want to be this close, right? This is uncomfortably close. Most good skills need to be uncomfortably close to the wall. Why is that? Because as we discussed earlier, if I'm close to the wall, that means my whole thing is taking place in an up and down plane. Your body can rotate and drop down at a normal speed. If I shove away from the wall where I feel safer, the further I travel backwards or forwards, the slower my flip is going to rotate. Just try doing a gainer or a loser flip and you will very quickly understand what I'm talking about. So one more time when I do this, come in, shoulders are down, I'm going to arch. You're going to see at the top of the arch in the back, I'm then going to pop the butt, tuck the knees and block. Whee! Now if you'll notice, I'm opening up way early and I'm still already halfway through the flip. If I just held that tuck, I probably would have made it all the way to my head. Wouldn't have felt good because I'm on a mat, but if I didn't do a foam pit, probably wouldn't have been a problem. This is a very good drill to get yourself used to it. Now, like we said before, your natural instincts are going to say, get away from that wall and shove back. We want to fight that. So a good way to do it is to make sure you know what it feels like when that happens and why it's not going to work. So in this one, I'm going to do a big cast and I'm going to shove away from the wall like almost everybody does when they first learn this skill. And you're going to see how much slower I rotate. So go here, same cast. Now that's not too much further back, but you see how open I am? I can't even touch that wall now. That would have been a really slow rotation. It would not have worked quite as well. Now, this is the part where it all gets real. And this is the part that scares most people. And that is committing to the actual trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our orange wall. We're going to get in our half cat and we're going to do cast backs into the foam pit. You need to make sure you have a good back flip before you do this. All right. This is a little different than a flyaway or a wall flip or a standing back, but it's very similar. If you have a good standing back flip, if you have a good palm flip, those two things will allow you to pick up this skill very quickly. If you do not have either one of those, a flyaway, although not necessarily a bad trick to have, a flyaway, that type of flip is not going to be much help in what this is like. Neither is like a wall back flip. You want a standing back or a palm flip. All right, so let's come on over and we'll show you guys what it looks like into the foam pit. So here we are. All I'm going to do Get my little archy cast, push through the shoulders, pop the butt, tuck the knees, just like I did over there, trying to keep myself nice and close to the wall, even though it literally scares the poop out of me. Sorry, good thing you guys can't smell through the camera. All I'm going to do is tuck into the tightest possible ball I can. None of this under the thighs garbage where the legs are swinging out. I want just underneath the kneecaps, pulling in. If you want to make it even easier, go into a cowboy. You're going to get a tighter, smaller flip. It's going to rotate faster. The biggest thing is you just got to hang on. You just got to hang on. Try not to throw your head and look back because it opens you up and you rotate slower. You just got to be okay with not seeing the ground the first time. Once you get three quarters of the way through your flip, you will see the ground. You can spot, you can open up. It'll be nice and easy. You're just going to have to commit, which is why I say do it into a foam pit first. We'll go right here. Little cast. I'm stuck. All right, guys, once you've done this drill and you've been able to land it every single time into that foam pit, you put a mat on top of the foam in your foam pit, you do it again until you can land it solid at least five or six times in a row. Uh, and then it's time to bring it over to a slightly harder surface, the ground. I recommend when you do it, have a nice big fat mat.
This is a little skinnier one because I've been doing this for a while, but you guys should probably start with at least a foot thick mat or even like a full, you know, two and a half, three foot resi mat. It's always, pay, always pays to be better safe than sorry. Um, falling on your head, always amusing to watch, not fun to participate in. So the last thing I want to show you guys is when I do this cast back, what I want you to notice is as soon as I come out and go to land, instead of trying to absorb and land my first couple ones, I'm going to slowly open up, eke out, touch the ground, and as soon as I hit it, I'm going to absorb down, fall backwards, and do a backwards roll. This is just a good way that you can practice this trick without having to fully commit to the landing so you can keep yourself a little safer in the beginning until you get the heebity jeebities out. All right, bigger flips like this, always they take a couple of to get them out. So you might as well keep it safe and sorry so you're not rolling an ankle, hurting your spine, anything like that. We're gonna come up. Woo! Dino. So I'm gonna come right here, and as soon as I finish this flip, we're just gonna do a little backwards roll out the end. I come here, cast, duck, woo! And backwards roll. Um, now I'm on a spring floor, so I just did a gymnastics backwards roll. If you're doing it outside for some reason with that doesn't really make much sense for starting but hey you can do the shoulder roll over the side protect the back of that noggin this has been our cast back tutorial i hope you guys like it this is probably one of our first i'd say bigger tricks we had the fly away but that's not a a bigger trick per se <sighs> gotta catch my breath climbing out of the foam pit is like the one that kills you the most all right guys i hope you had a good time like comment subscribe share Bink that little bell or whatever the thing is become become one of our tens and tens of subscribers and i will see your beautiful faces next week where we're going to work on some more free running tutorials ciao I don't know.